Former President Donald Trump took the stand today answering questions under oath in his New York civil fraud trial. Prosecutors pressing him about the values of his properties, including Trump Tower, Mar-a-Lago, and whether he inflated their values for loans and tax benefits. His testimony, contentious from the very start as the former president railed at the judge, attacked the attorney general, accused them of election interference, and called the case a witch hunt. So what does the former president's testimony mean as he runs for the nation's highest office again? Here to discuss our political analyst, former governor and U.S. ambassador to China, Gary Locke, and former state attorney general, Rob McKenna. Thank you both <laughs> for being here. We really appreciate your time. I'm going to start with you, Gary. First of all, what did you make of his performance in court today on the stand under oath? Well, it was very much a performance. Uh, he was trying to get some more airtime, uh, but doing it in an official setting, uh, trying to convey that he's not ignoring the lawsuits, but then uh, being very combative and, re -emphas and emphasizing the point all along that this is politically motivated. And he's also saying uh, it was up to the banks and, and others to do their due diligence, and um, they didn't have to accept his valuations of the property. Rob, what did yeah. you make of him attacking the attorney general, attacking the judge? The judge is going to decide the case, the right. damages, it's already been determined yeah. that fraud has right. happened. So what did you make? Is this strategy, is this yeah. intentional? Oh, it's entirely strategic. So he's attacking the Attorney General because he wants this case to appear to be a, a political witch hunt. He's attacking the judge because why not? The judge has already found, uh, as an initial matter, that fraud was committed. Now he just has to figure out what the remedy is, right? Is he going to lose, is Trump going to lose his ability to conduct business in New York State, for example? But that remedy is key because the court's going to have to find, and it'll have to be upheld on appeal, that uh, Trump was unjustly enriched by undervaluing his properties for one purpose, but overvaluing them, you know, for the purposes of getting loans. So did the lenders to his company receive less interest, smaller interest payments, because of the va higher value or inflated value of the property? If they did, that's unjust enrichment of him at their expense. If, if it can't be proven that they did, though, that's harder for the, you know, court to find him guilty of unjust enrichment. His approach definitely appears to be playing to the base, but from a legal perspective, how is it playing in court? Well, he, Trump's behavior today makes it very clear that he fully expects the judge to rule against him. So all he's really focused on right now is the political uh, fallout, if any, and trying to avoid that in this case. Uh, and he, he is probably thinking ahead to the appeal, and uh, you know he wants to make. He's probably trying to bait the judge, so that the judge does something rash in order to make it easier to appeal from whatever the you know determination the judge makes about the remedy. In other words, how much mm -hmm. Trump's going to have to pay. So far, it hasn't appeared that the judge has yeah. wobbled. Not we'll so see. far. He's keeping his cool so far. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the New York Times Siena College poll, uh, raising some big concerns yeah. for Democrats, showing that Trump is leading in many of the key battleground states, states in Nevada, Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, only Biden up in Wisconsin by two. So, Gary, first to you, how, how do you explain uh, how this is benefiting Trump, even in all of these battleground states, many of which... Biden won last time around. Well, obviously, uh, uh, Trump's base is highly motivated. I mean, they're, they're not going to move. They're not going to abandon him. Uh, the other Republican challengers are not going to make much headway uh, because uh, the, the former president is emphasizing that everything that's happening to him is all politically motivated. And that's right, it's basically uh, um, energizing his base. Uh, and so they're tuning out, and as Rob indicated, uh, he's performing in front of the cameras to uh, hopefully, uh, uh, on appeal, bait the judge and uh, hopefully uh, tell the voters that, hey, I don't care what they mm -hmm. find me, uh, it's all politically motivated. I think with respect to the Times poll, it shows that people are very concerned about uh, President Biden's age. They would prefer very. that he not run. But when it gets down to the end, after all these court cases uh, are, are, uh, are done with, it's going to, the election is going to fall to the independents and the moderates. And how do they feel about everything that will by then have come out about uh, pre former President Trump? And I'm curious, Rob, your reaction, because the poll did not bode well for Democrats, certainly right. for Biden. People, 77 percent, think that he's too old. He's losing ground with black voters. Trump is right. gaining ground with black and Hispanic voters. Right. It was it was pretty devastating for Democrats if they're looking at this poll, even though we're still a year out. 
It's still early. It's too early, for example, to say for sure what impact, if any, these court cases are going to have on the election on, on, on Trump's numbers. But it's clear that at this point, they're not really having any effect. So uh, what people are focused on instead is their unhappiness with President Biden for whatever reason. Uh, and uh, now Trump is the, you know, he's not the one in office. So last time in 2020, Biden had the advantage of running against Trump with a bad economy, the COVID hangover, and the other issues. This time, it's Trump who's taking advantage of the challenges that Biden is facing uh, as the incumbent, even though, and this is the kind of the irony, I think, the economy is actually doing pretty well with low unemployment, right. inflation is falling, income, income and wages are up, et cetera. People just can't seem to get out of this funk that they're in, and they're tying that to Biden, which is reflected in his really low approval ratings. And, uh, you know, that, that's going to be a drag on him all the way through unless he can figure out a way to turn it around. While people are still feeling it at the grocery store and the gas tank, I mean, right. the economy might be better, but inflation still yep. <laughs> seems to be that's, stinging, that's right? That's right? How seriously do you think we should take this poll with a year to go? I wouldn't take it any more seriously than as a snapshot of where we are today, okay. if the election were held today. If we learn anything in the last couple of cycles, it's A, things can change rapidly. B, polling isn't to be entirely <laughs> oh. trusted. We learned that. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I, you know, I, I'll take it with a grain of salt. But having said all of that, I agree with you and with Gary that you know, Democrats should be worried here because they're, that what, what stands out to me the most is that base supporters for the president are shifting away from him. Hispanics, blacks, and young people, apparently in part because of uh, President Biden's strong support for Israel, which personally I applaud, but apparently is costing him some support with uh, left of center young Democrats. I have just a few seconds left. Yeah. This is, of course, a civil case. Yeah. Do you think I think potentially a conviction on any of the criminal cases will have an impact with voters or not. I suspect that those trials will not take place until after November of 2024, actually. So, no. If, if there are any convictions in the criminal case, I think it will have a slight impact, and it will have an impact on the independents and the moderates. And those are always the key decision makers in any election. You'll have the hardcore Democrats that will always vote for the Democrats, hardcore Republicans that will vote for the Republican no matter what. Races are decided in the middle, and who knows what's going to happen between now and then. If, if, it bec if it comes more clear as to what former President Trump wants to do in a second term, and if people really understand that, that might influence and uh, we're learning elector. more and more about what his intentions might be in a second term. We're going to have to save that conversation for another visit. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much. We also want to note that the New York AG's office plans to rest its case after daughter Ivanka Trump testifies on Wednesday. No court tomorrow because of Election Day. Um, but again, they're going to rest and then def the defense will start on Wednesday.